Oh, g'day, mate. Forty here. There's a new book out from Yale University by uh, Yale professor Stephen Smith, and it's called "Reclaiming Patriotism in an Age of Extremes." Today, both nationalism and cosmopolitanism, attesting the very definition of allegiance to one's country. Okay, so great news. Today on the show, we're gonna reclaim patriotism in the in the age of extremes. Okay, are you ready to reclaim patriotism? Do you feel the blessings here as we engage in an intellectual journey? Are you ready of uh, radical love and inclusion? I'm pretty excited. H- how about you? So, from the preface of this new book, what is patriotism? Who is a patriot? Does patriotism require us to affirm my country right or wrong? Or does it require us to protest at injustice? What should we do if patriotism or love of country conflicts with other loyalties and obligations? Is patriotism a virtue? What kind of virtue is it? Has patriotism outlived its usefulness? What is a people? Who defines a people? What is a nation? Right? These these academic questions as though if we don't have one sharp, clear definition of something, such as what a people is, then therefore it's not real. I mean, you, what is love? Like, who is my brother? Is is Elliot Blatt my brother? Like, my biological brother is in Australia. We share the same mother, the same father. We grew up together, right? We're, we're genetically linked. So who is my brother? My brother is Paul, but also my brother is Elliot, because my biological brother, Paul, he's not a member of my channel. But uh, Elliot Blatt, he, he's been a member of my channel since day one. So Elliot Blatt's my brother. Now, I've never met Elliot Blatt in real life. He, For, for all I know, he may be a terrorist or a, a porn star or Antifa. I mean, who is my brother? Like, who is man? that you are mindful of him. Who is the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and you crowned him with glory and honor. The birds of the air and the fish of the sea, all that swim across the paths of the sea. Okay, that's a little bit there from uh, Psalms 8, but who is man? I mean, what is love? Who is the people? What is a nation? What is a race? I mean, some say love. It is a river that drowns the tender reed. Some say love. It is a razor that leaves your soul to bleed. So if we can't clearly define and and agree on one standard precise definition of love, does that mean that love's not real? Well, I don't know about you, bro, but I believe in love. I stand up here believing in love. I mean, some say love, it is a hunger, an endless aching need. I say love, it is a flower, and you, it's only seed. So what is a people? What is a nation? What is a race? What is love? Well, love, it's the heart afraid of breaking that never learns to dance. It's the dream afraid of waking that never takes the chance. It's the one who won't be taken, who cannot seem to give, and the soul afraid of dying that never learns to live. So when the night has been too lonely and the road has been too long and you think that love is only for the lucky and the strong, Just remember, in the winter, far beneath the bitter snows, lies the seed that with the sun's love in the spring becomes the rose. So what is a people? What is a race? What is a nation? What is love? I'm with you. I want to know what love is. I got to take a little time, a little time to think things over. I I better read between the lines. I could be a good academic in case I need it when I'm older. Now, This mountain that I must climb on this stream today, it feels like a world upon my shoulders. But through the clouds, I see love shine, and it keeps me warm as life grows colder. In my life, mate, there's been heartache and pain. I don't know if I can face it again. I can't stop now. I've traveled so far to change this lonely life. I want to know what love is. I want to know what a people is. I want to know what patriotism is. I want to know what a nation is. And I want you to show me. I want to feel what love is. 
I know you can show me if you're female. I'm going to take a little time, a little time to look around me. I've got nowhere left to hide. It looks like love has finally found me. Let's talk about love. Love that you feel inside. And I'm feeling so much love. Oh no, you just cannot hide. All right. So let's go back to the book here by the Yale professor. He says, I'm not alone in asking these questions. Books about patriotism are a dime a dozen. Well, there are a lot of books I'd love too. The most familiar kind is the book written by some earnest American, often a celebrity, affirming his faith in his flag and country. My favorite work in this genre is Black Belt Patriotism by the martial arts action hero Chuck Norris. Great news, though. There is also serious philosophical literature on patriotism that has grown out of Alistair McIntyre's classic article. We've all read this classic article, right? You have, I have, we've all read it. Is patriotism a virtue? Which asks whether it is possible to give ethical preference to one's own country if this offends universal standards of justice. Well, wait, is it, is it possible to give ethical preference to one's own children if this offends universal standards of justice? Is it, is it possible to give ethical preference to one's wife if this offends universal standards of justice? Is it, is it possible to give ethical preference to one's friends if if this offends universal standards of justice. Well, great news. There are two absolutely indispensable books on patriotism. The first is by political theorist. You all know, you know what I'm going to say. Maurizio Veroli, For Love of Country. This work admirably tries to disentangle patriotism from the tortured history of European nationalism. So disentangling patriotism from the tortured history of European nationalism, that, that's like disentangling uh, margarine from the butter, okay? Margarine's artificial. I I'm sure Elliot Blatt, Elliot Blatt does not eat margarine because margarine is artificial, it's just chemicals, but butter is fair dinkum, all right? Butter is the real deal. Y you just squeeze some cow udders and out comes the milk and then you churn the milk and you get cream and then you churn the cream and you get butter. It it's natural, bros. Yeah. 40 is like the prophet of love. Amanda Gorman is nothing compared to our friend 40. Absolutely. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Okay, so we're going to disentangle patriotism from the tortured history of uh, European nationalism. Then the other work is by a constitutional scholar, Walter Burns, Making Patriots. Wow. Great book, great book. Okay, so patriotism refers to love of your state, right? Love of your particular country and uh, love of your constitution. We all love the constitution, right? We love our cops, our law enforcement. We love our military too because they're important. And uh, what about the constitution? We love our constitution. So imagine that patriotism was our primary form of political expression. Right? Imagine that uh, love of our constitution, of our state, uh, of our country, was our primary form of political expression, then we'd be in a situation a little bit like Portland. Right? We, we'd love you to be in You are looking at a dangerous person. You may feel unsafe, even threatened by my very existence. What is this power I possess? It's called free speech. While I knew it was always there, I recently discovered its true value. Here's my story. It could easily be yours. I'm a journalist, an author, and a podcaster. I live in Portland, Oregon. My husband owns a few local coffee shops and a small coffee roasting business called Ristretto Roasters. In December 2018, I started a YouTube podcast entitled Hashtag Me Neither. The show's about page reads, Me Neither is an almost weekly conversation about the cultural issues of the day and an attempt to create a space where people can find ways to think out loud through uncomfortable topics. One of those topics is the Me Too movement and what I see as some of its excesses, including celebrities who exploit Me Too for personal gain. Sexual assault and harassment are real, but the idea that any charge any woman or man brings must be believed without question, where's the logic in that? I believe we are better off judging any claim of harassment like any other claim, 
on its own merits. This, I would learn, is not a popular position. It turned out one of the people tuning into my new show was a former employee of my husband's coffee business. She claimed my views were vile, dangerous, and extremely misguided, and in an email to the press, claim my opinions created a demoralizing and hostile environment for employees. Why would the opinions of the wife of the boss demoralize an employee? No one bothered to ask that question. That I appeared to be on the wrong side of the Me Too debate was all people needed to know.